All right, good morning, ladies and gents. So today is gonna be the first part of a three-part series, for sure three-part series, depending on what kind of comments you have um, on these videos, then I might make more, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, by the way, I'm Davis, this is the Flop and Crappie channel, and today we're gonna be talking about 2D sonar. Now this topic actually came up from a subscriber commented on the micro chatterbait, the, the first micro chatterbait challenge. They've just bought a brand new unit and it's a, they bought a Garmin, I believe it's a 9.3 SV. Doesn't matter, 2D sonar is 2D sonar, okay? The only thing different um, compared to some units and even similar units is just to cut the palette scale. So if you notice here on the right side, the top of my screen on this, on this color scale here is extremely dark red, which means the largest fish, the largest cover, you know, brush piles, uh, bridges, any, anything under the water that is solid, sol that has a, a large surface area is gonna show up as red. And on the, it goes from red, orange, yellow, green, and then blue, is the uh, the lightest color so any type of bait fish that i have shad will probably show up as as blue uh, any small fish or smaller structure is going to show up as or smaller cover is going to show up as blue on this unit now you can adjust it to whatever palette uh, scale you want but first i just want to talk about how to go ahead and set one of these up now this is the hummingbird helix 9 this is the first generation um, Humminbird, Lowrance, Garmin, they're all the same as far as 2D sonar goes, okay? There might be a few different things in menu setups, but it's, it's 2D sonar. It's very, very uh, uniform. So the first thing you're gonna do, because this is a crappie fishing channel mostly, uh, I'm gonna target, I'm gonna set this up as if I'm crappie fishing. So if, if you notice here, my deepest, my uh, lowest limit is 30 feet. All you're gonna do is go to your lower range. Maybe it's your, uh, your lower input, something similar to this. Now, the top range says auto, and that's something I can't adjust on this unit. Some units you can actually adjust to only see uh, 10 foot down to 30 foot down, and that's your window. This unit, I, can only see, I can't adjust the top, but I can adjust the bottom. Now, you see I have it set for 30 feet. Now, the reason that's important especially when you're fishing for crappie, there's actually two reasons. First of all, we're gonna talk about surface area and pixels on your unit. So when you designate a smaller window, you're, you're giving more pixels per square area to a fish, uh, a lure, some sort, of, some sort of structure. So what I mean by this is, if I have this on auto and I'm fishing in 100 feet of water, okay, something the size of this might only have two or three pixels. I may not be able to see it very well, but if I scale up and only have a lower unit range of 30 feet, this might have 50 pixels and I'll be able to see it very, very clearly. If I'm in a hundred feet of water and I see something like this, a bunch of bait fish, I'm not gonna see this on the sonar. 30 feet range, I might be able to see this on the sonar. This might be five to 10 meg, five to 10 pixels. It depends on your unit, how many pixels uh, gets designated to a, to a certain square area. But that's, that's the first main point is when you shrink your window down, you actually see more. You designate more pixels to a square area of water so that something like this, you'll be able to see very, very clearly. And this you'll probably be able to pick up as well. The second thing of why I always set it to 30 feet is I'm never fishing for crappie deeper than 30 feet of water. I might be fishing them in 35 feet, but they're suspended up to that 15 to 20 foot range. But I don't like fishing crappie or really any species in deeper than 30 feet of water purely because of the mortality rate. So when you catch crappie in deeper than 30 feet of water, what happens a lot of times is when you bring them up, even if you bring them up slow and you work the fish up slow, when you release them, they don't have the energy to get back down to the depth they need. Their air, their air bladders, bladders expand and they float back up to the surface and they die. Um, this is, goes for a lot of fish. I know I've seen a lot of videos in the walleye fishermen because walleye, you can catch walleye in 45 feet of water, 
but is it ethically, but is it ethical to fish them? That's the biggest question. And for me, the answer is no. You know, it doesn't doesn't really matter. If I'm fishing deeper than 30 feet of water, I'm going to keep a crappie. Okay, I'm not going to let it go. It's going to there's a very high probability it's going to die. Very high. So that's that's the second reason. So first reason, square area, the pixels on your unit. Second reason is mortality rate, just the ethical uh, ethical way of fishing, I guess. So now that we have our lower unit set up, you can go ahead and go to your sensitivity and you're gonna play around with it. Just go ahead, start it off at whatever your mid-range is. So for me, it's 10. For you, it might be five. Whatever your mid-range is. And notice I'm getting a little of some marks here, but I'm, I'm gonna crank it up because this is some pretty clear water. And these marks are probably, they could be bait fish. I'm a little deep right now. I'm gonna go over to some brush piles and I'm gonna show you what crappie actually look like on this sonar. But I'm, I usually like to crank it up uh, to about 12 or 13. This is fairly clear water. A lot of the lakes I fish up here are very clear. If there's a big rainstorm or storm that comes in and uh, there's a lot of silt in the water, or, or in the fall time when the leaves come off the trees, all you're gonna see is just a bunch of dots. Um, then you can go ahead and turn your sensitivity down. It's just gonna look, it's gonna look annoying when you have all those leaves in the water and you think they're fish. But right now we're, in, we're uh, coming to the end of July. This is, we're getting into August here. So uh, super clear water, really warm. There's a fish mark right here at the 15 mark. That's for sure a fish. I usually crank it up to 13. Okay, so chart speed. Why is chart speed important? Now, I, if you go on the Humminbird site, they say to match chart speed with whatever speed you're actually going. So right now I'm going 3.6 miles an hour. I usually like to round up by a mile, mile an hour. And so I'm, I'm gonna set it at four. Now the, the reason this is important is because a lot of times you notice that my fish aren't arcs, right? They're, they're more vertical lines. Like they're, they're half, they're semi arcs. Like that's a, that's a pretty good sized fish right there. It's probably a bass or a walleye. It's a semi arc. A lot of times you won't actually see the big arcs on, on sonar units. And you can play around with your chart speed to kind of adjust to fine tune whether or not you start seeing a, not quite a full arc, but more of an arc um, to see some of these fish. A lot of times, if the chart speed is too slow, and this is according to the Humminbird website, the chart speed's too slow, you're either gonna see a blob or, yeah, you're either gonna, you're gonna see a blob, like kind of like this one. That one's kind of an arc right there, but you're just gonna see a blob if the chart speed's too slow. If it's too fast, you're just gonna see straight lines or the other way around. I don't remember which. Either way, play around with your chart speed. Try to get a form close to that arc. The reason you see on the simulators of all these arcs and everything, those are massive, those are large groups of uh, white bass or striper. Those are large groups of stripers. That's what the simulators are, okay? Those are not crappie. Crappie do not look like that on the sonar. Um, unless you have sensitivity jacked way up, you got your chart speed fine-tuned and you're going about one mile an hour trolling over them. That is the only time crappie will ever look like that on a sonar. If you're cruising like this, I'm, I'm just in idle speed right now, three miles an hour, three and a half miles an hour, crappie are not gonna look like that. So ch that's chart speed. Now, before I go make a run to some brush piles and show you what actual crappie look like, I wanna talk about the math behind what the 2D sonar is. So. There's a transducer on the back of the boat and it shoots down at, at an angle to form a cone, right? Now, the cone degree varies depending on what sonar unit you have. Um, anything from eight degree to 20 degree cones and obviously eight degree cones are narrower, okay? Smaller surface area on the lake bottom. 20 degree cones are wider. You can see more surface area. Um, I believe this is a 19 degree, I can check, but Basically, the math behind it is most, most sonar units are somewhere between 18 to 21 degree. The math behind it is one third the total depth. That is the surface area of the lake bottom that you're covering. So I'm at 23 feet. Roughly, I'm covering seven feet of water spread across my boat here, seven feet of water. So if I don't have down imaging or side imaging and I can't see left and right of me, seven feet of water is what I have to move over to see the next kind of section of water. So if I'm trolling a shoreline, like I kind of am right now, I'm only covering seven feet of water, which means when I make my turn, I have to eyeball it so that seven feet of water, I'm only seven feet of water over, or it'd be three and a half feet of water over outside of my boat. 
okay? It's a fairly narrow, narrow cone. You're not covering a whole lot of water. And that's, that's in diameter, by the way. That's seven feet in diameter. Okay, we're gonna run over some brush piles. I wanna show you what they actually look like on the sonar. Okay, so this is actually what a big school of crappie look like right here. Now, if you notice, there, this is the brush pile coming up. It's a solid red color, that's the brush pile. So if you notice, these crappie are not quite perfect arcs. And I'm only going half a mile an hour, which is why they look elongated. But this is a this is a solid school crappie. I don't know if they're very big. I mean, looking on my sonar from what I'm used to. Oops. Let's let's hear. There we go. From what I'm used to, these are probably nine, ten inch fish, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, but those are what crappie look like on the sonar. You see the green outline and then the orange, and there's some deeper red in there. The, the deeper red means it's a, a larger fish. There's a larger surface area that this graph is reading. The brush pile right here is, as you can tell, it's reading the wood, um, it's dark red. That's the kind of, uh, that's kind of what you wanna see as far as brush piles. If you see fish that have that deep dark red, those are larger fish. So late July right now, these crappie are actually suspended off, suspended off these. Uh, so here's the brush pile right on the break. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that off. So here's the brush pile right on the break. And there's, there's smaller crappie suspended up off the top of that brush pile. Look, this looks like a big ball of a shad or some bait fish in there. But this is, uh, the, I don't know if these are larger crappie. I mean, these are probably smaller crappie than the, the first section of crappie we went over. But this is what crappie look like. They'll get, they're gonna be stacked up and down vertically and uh, they'll spread out a little bit. So yeah, th they're not quite arcs, okay? When you see the simulators in the stores and you see the big arcs, it's not what crappie look like. It's not what a lot of fish look like. Um, those are big stripers and and very carp and just very large fish. That's what those those large fish look like on uh, on sonar units. Most of the time, I got bass busting at the top. I got a fluke tied on too. I might be throwing for bass in a second. Um, but this is what crappie look like. They're going to be stacked up and down ver vertically. Um, they're just going to be little little blobs. Okay, there's. The bigger crappie are going to be a little more elongated. Now, unless you zoom in, let's, if I were able to zoom into, let's say, 12 feet to 20 feet, then these crappie would look a lot larger on this screen because it's only having to cover, you know, what is that, 12 to 20, 8 feet of, surf, of water depth means there's more pixels designated to a greater surface area, to a smaller surface area. So one square inch of, of surface area in the water could be, that could be 30 mega, that could be 30 pixels, which means these crappie are gonna look a lot larger the more you zoom in or the more you shrink your depth range. Whew, it's hot today. So that's what kind of crappie, what crappie look like on 2D sonar. That's kind of how to set it up. Um, comment below if you got any more questions. I know this is kind of more just a talking video, not a whole lot of fish catching, but someone who requested this in the comment sections, I'm gonna be doing two more. I'm gonna be doing a uh, how to find brush piles, both with side imaging and 2D and down imaging, and then how to find suspended crappie. Those are two more, two other videos that I plan on filming in this series. Put, the, put it in the comment section if you have any other questions or anything I, I missed that you want me to go over and make another video on. Really appreciate it. And as always, be sure to like and share these videos. And if you're not a subscriber, below the video, bottom right hand corner of the screen, there's a red subscribe button, click that, and then be sure to click that bell. That bell notifies you every time I post a video. You gotta click the bell to get notified. And at the end of the video, you'll see my face holding a crappie. You can click on that to subscribe as well. We'll see ya.